Hello YouTube, welcome to Wayne's World of Mandolin. I hope you'll visit often and subscribe to the channel. If you're interested in one-on-one -on -one Skype sessions, you'll find a good email on me in the description of each video. And if you'd like to throw a few bucks in the tip jar, you can use the same email to PayPal me something that way. It would be appreciated. So this is by request today. I've had a lot of you guys email with specific questions and songs and all that and then a handful of people also that just said hey how about some licks and that's right we all play licks i i don't really teach this way through licks a lot but i, I want to you know go in this direction for the people that ask for it so the first thing that comes to mind is for me you know straight bluegrass mandolin from the bluegrass album band volume one a lick that Doyle Lawson played in the key of G on the tune Gonna Settle Down. I got a picture up here of that album cover. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to edit that music into the video, you know, for copyright reasons or whatever. Won't be able to do that, but if you haven't ever heard this record, you really need to if you're into bluegrass. And uh, for this lick, especially to hear... Doyle Lawson's cadence that he plays the lick and just the dynamic that he plays it at, no one else is really going to equal that. But we can learn the notes and apply it to other, not just this song, but other bluegrass standards in the key of G. So this, I totally copied this lick, which is what we do with the things that we listen to our heroes play on a 3TO tune called If Your Heart Should Ever Roll This Way Again. It's on the Primetime album where this particular phrase really did fit nicely in a split break section that the fiddle, banjo, and um, mandolin play near the end of the arrangement. Again, I'm not going to be able to use that exact content, but I did find a video of us doing the tune back then on YouTube, so I'm going to let you guys hear kind of the application of this. Um, hopefully you've listened to the Doyle Lawson version, but anyway, here's me using Doyle's lick in a 3TO tune. Okay, so you can hear, I think, uh, a little more tempo maybe on that live cut of us than what it actually was in the studio, which makes this one a handful to execute. I'm going to break the lick down, and it's, this is one with the right hand. I like to play all down direction with the pick. I'm not sure if Doyle Lawson plays it that way with his right hand. My suspicion is that he does, but this lick... That's it, and he, there's this Bill Monroe phrase that he does on the end of it, but this could be the what happens after it could be a lot of different things, so we're not going to talk about that. Let's just look at the core of this lick. Now, it starts with an open G, then an open D string. Now, if we were playing a G major arpeggio, You should be able to do that in third position on your mandolin with your index finger over the root note. And if you can, you're going to understand it when I just say, hey, play that triad, G, B, D. Those are just the notes of the G major arpeggio. So we have two open strings, and then this triad... Now, instead of playing the 10th fret of the A string, which is a G note, we're going to go down to the E string and play that D note. This lick moves from here, from our lowest note all the way up to that D. 
really fast. That's what makes it so cool is that it kind of sweeps the neck of the mandolin. Now, if you're familiar with some of the bluesier things that we've talked about on the channel, here's that slide from a minor third into the major third. We're just doing that with our pinky over the D, the D note there on the 10th fret of the E string, where normally if I was playing out of that triad, I'd do it with my index and my ring finger. But because of the way this lick lays on the mandolin, you're going to need to use your pinky on the 10th fret. Check that out. Here we have a non-scale note there. We're playing an F note instead of an F sharp to give it a bluesier sound. Most of you are going to recognize that from other phrases that you've played out of this position. Just play in bluegrass, we're going to be familiar with that flat seven note. So from the beginning of the phrase, that's 10th fret, 8th fret, 5th fret on the A string. After we play down the scale, this is an awkward feeling thing to play because it doesn't happen that often that we're playing the 4th scale degree to the 5th. Just in the world of bluegrass, I mean, we would feel that a lot. Practicing a scale. But in this particular setting, that might feel awkward to you. All of this pinky work at the 10th fret could if you're not used to using your pinky. So after the C note, back to the fifth fret on the A string, then we're gonna have, there it is again, the minor to major third embellishment, where we're gonna slide from that, in this case, a B flat note on the eighth fret of the D string up to a B note on the ninth fret of the D string. And then landing on a G note here. And hopefully at the end of the line, you'll still be able to hear your G string sustain. If you, if you haven't muted the string, by accidentally touching it with one of your fingers here or letting the palm of your hand come across the bridge, there should still be kind of the ghost of that note ringing when you get to the end of the phrase. So hopefully, if you go to local jam sessions, you could just play this lick on the end of Gonna Settle Down or find traditional songs other than that at a suitable tempo where this lick would fit. So I hope you guys enjoy it. This is going to be a playlist. This is going to be a series where we do breakdown licks like this on different players.